the oldest, and they've experienced it more than anybody else, and their youth are so much on the other end. There are about 75,000 blogs in Iran, and if you read these blogs, or some of these blogs, you'll be amazed of the thinking that is behind it. So, could Iran, I mean, is Iran the first Islamic Republic, and then the first Islamic liberal Republic, changing over time? Would this take 10 to 15 years? Uh, what would it take for this to happen in a normal transition over time as a result of actual failures, actual economic, political uh, failures on the ground? Uh, so there is a lot now that youth will have to carry, that this generation will have to uh, deal with. Uh, uh, what I am sure of is that this generation of the Arab world, the youth of the Arab world, the youth of the Middle East uh, will make a statement, will make a statement, similar to the statements made by uh, previous generations of the world in the 1960s. And you mentioned the 1960s. There was a statement by youth. It was a, across the world, into the Arab world then, and into Europe. The French Revolution, student revolution, had an impact in the late 60s all over the world on so many youth. There is a sense of making a statement. Uh, uh, a sense of uh, being the engine of change, a sense of the need to be empowered, a sense of the need to be recognized, uh, uh, to make a difference, and they look at the older generation, they don't want to be there 20 years from now. They are looking for alternative vision. Thank you. Well, uh, members, well, members of the staff uh, pick up question cards that we have around. Uh, I'll start with mine. In uh, the 60s, uh, youth in America looked to people like John F. Kennedy or Martin Luther King for inspiration. Who, who do youth in the Middle East look to now for inspiration? Are there movie stars or political leaders? Who inspires them? Uh, well, during the 60s, uh, there was uh, there was more models in the world 